Hello travelers. Today we're going to talk about a complicated one. Life expectancy and degradation of GPUs, CPUs, other silicon devices like that. What influences the life? What can you do to ensure your hardware lasts a long time? A lot of people look at temperatures and they think, well surely that must be something that matters, and it does, but probably not for the reasons you expect. We'll talk about the three primary characteristics that influence life and maybe you could gather some ideas what you could do to help extend the life and the likelihood that your hardware lasts a long time. First, I think it helps to get a lay of the land here. This is a 980 Ti that had a silicon failure, so this is dead and unrepairable. It's beyond economic repair. This element right here is the actual GPU core, this shiny bit. That's it. That's basically the thing that does all the processing. And in fact, only a small physical portion of this is active at any time doing work. Other bits may not be used because they have things like video encoder engines and machine learning algorithms that run on these things and various other bits for various applications. So like in 20 and 30 series GPUs, there's a small element in here that's dedicated just to ray tracing. And if you're not using ray tracing, well, it may not be doing anything, right? But it physically takes up space on the silicon. And inside here, there's a few dozen layers, super, super microscopic circuitry and different metals and materials that are built up over layers that are oddly enough actually on the backside. This is the bottom of the actual GPU core that you're looking at here. And then it's bonded to here for electrical and mechanical contact and heat gets pulled out through a big heat sink. This puts off a fair bit of heat, so you need a pretty big heat sink on these things, as you may be aware. But underneath, this is basically what they look like. A lot more simple than you might imagine. Inside all these memory chips here, these big black squares, is more silicon like this. A little smaller than this, of course. They're just conveniently stored in these packages to make it easier to deal with. And these don't put off a ton of heat, so heat sinking these isn't too big of a deal. Although, you know, some cards like 3080 Founders, so they're known for having high memory temperatures, but the chips themselves don't really relatively put off much heat. It's just the heat sinking that's done on those is not stellar. But traditionally, these run pretty cool. But all the other components on here pretty much are what you would call passive to some extent, although they are semi-active, voltage regulators and controllers and all sorts of things like that for monitoring and whatnot. They basically just allow this to do its job, tell it what to do. But this is the thing doing all the heavy lifting, processing the work, producing the frames that come out so you could win your games. And now, temperatures matter on things like this. When you measure the temperature, like say here, this is the core temperature, so it's typically there's multiple temperature sensors inside the actual core element in here, and it's picking oftentimes the hottest one or maybe averaging them. And the reason why the temperature matters isn't probably for what you expect. It's not to say temperatures don't matter, they do. Higher temperatures will cause increased degradation, but typically it's fairly minor. Typically there's other characteristics that will increase and cause more degradation before it causes a failure from just the temperature wear. However, the temperature will increase the primary issue for these things to fail. And that tends to be thermal cycling, right? So there's more or less three characteristics that influence the life. Thermal cycling tends to be the most significant, voltage and temperature. And then I guess a fourth, maybe design, but that's kind of like out of your control. The physical hardware design, the physical silicon design, there could be a defect in one of the layers or relatively a weak link inside the layers that cause a particular model core or a particular model voltage regulator that's installed on these to be weaker than expected, not last as long as expected. But in something like this, pretty much almost everything in here needs to work. If any element fails, the card's dead, or at least a part of it dies. And oftentimes the part that dies is the part that's stressed. So pretty much when it dies, it's no longer useful for whatever you were using it for. And that's the trouble. You have more or less a winkus link philosophy with these. Any element on here fails, it's dead. Any one of these memory chips die, it's dead. A voltage regulator dies, probably dead, right? And on top of that, with these cores, with the GPU, the silicon, since they're so microscopically small and there's so many little layers built up on top of each other that are really, really close together, 
what happens is when they heat, they expand a little bit. When they cool, they shrink a little bit. This expansion and contraction, because there's different materials inside that chip, these expansion contractions happen at very tiny, slightly microscopically different rates. So it causes stresses and pressures inside that chip to build up. And what can happen is over time, you get fatigue, failures, cracks, things like that. Bits that don't work anymore because they're not physically connected. And oftentimes in gaming GPUs especially, it's that thermal cycling that causes these things to fail. The thermal cycling causes stresses inside this. So you think something that's a solid state device, no moving parts, how can it wear? It causes mechanical stresses that causes effectively a mechanical failure inside this tiny itty bitty super complicated chip. And that could happen in all the other bits too, a memory controller, a voltage controller, any of these memory chips. Same thing happens there when they heat up, they expand, when they cool, they shrink. And as a result, you could get fractures. And pretty much if any of those crack or fail in any way, if you get micro fractures, the thing dies. So that's where the design comes in. If this thing happens to have a good design, maybe the thing will be built in such a way that the whole thing will wear out more or less evenly. However, if there's a bad design, there could be something in there that's weak and it fails in a year, two, three years, rather than five years, 10 years, like you might expect. So there's not much you can do about the design. It kind of is what it is. Running it cooler tends to help, primarily because of this thermal expansion and contraction. But that's why you want to keep your temperatures down. Not really because of the increased degradation from high temperatures, although that is a thing. The hardware, the silicon, will degrade faster at higher temperatures. That usually isn't what causes these to fail. Usually it's thermal expansion, contraction. So with mining, oddly enough, it isn't that hard of a workload if you run them well. If they're always on, they're always loaded, they're always running, they don't cool down, they don't change temperature, they don't start and stop, they actually can last longer than you might expect. In gaming, when the game pauses, when it's loading, the load goes down on the GPU and the temperature goes down and you get all this expansion contraction, different frame rates, different loading and different elements of the game. You get various heat buildup, different power running through the GPU core, different temperatures during gameplay, and that causes different rates of thermal expansion, internal stresses and pressures that over time will cause fatigue and failures inside the tiny itty bitty little microcircuitry inside that thing. Unrepairable and replacing one of these typically costs more than the whole thing. It's not really economically viable. That is pretty much the primary cost of this component, right? Everything around it is practically fluff. So if the GPU core dies, oftentimes it's trash, not worth repairing. So in mining, that's oftentimes where you kind of want to have these things always running. Shutting them down and starting them up or cycling them up and down and stuff like that can cause issues, can cause increased degradation because this thing has more thermal stresses from its cycling, heating and expanding, contracting. And now, probably the second most important thing, although it's pretty close with temperatures, is voltage. Voltage causes, believe it or not, physical wear inside the silicon. Since these components are so itty bitty and the physical bits that make them up are so close together, there's little insulator layers and various materials and stuff that are built up that need to be a certain way, very precise, in order for the thing to work properly. So what can happen is as the voltage goes up, these electrons are basically going faster with more energy, the holes are going faster, the inside component bits are traveling with higher energy and as a result it causes increased degradation when uh, you're operating these components at increased voltage. So in mining oftentimes the cores run at relatively low power but that is another factor. You want to try to minimize the voltage the devices run at because voltage irrespective of temperature will still cause degradation. You can run a CPU on liquid nitrogen cold as hell but if you throw a lot of voltage at it, you still could kill it, right? Same is true for GPUs. They're built more or less the same manner. The voltage will cause degradation irrespective of temperature. However, decreased temperature more or less minimizes all these effects. So you wanna have the temperature as low as you can get it, but you're limited by the design of the hardware. And you wanna minimize the voltage, but of course, there's only so much you could do. You wanna, of course, in mining, you wanna maximize your hash rate. And there's tools you could use like GPU-Z, open that up in Windows. And if you're using another program, 
it's potentially a little harder depending on the GPU to see your voltage, but you can actually see the voltage the hardware is running on in most hardware with a program like GPU-Z. It'll tell you your various voltages a bit. Not necessarily you could do a lot about it, but with things like NVIDIA GPUs, as you put the core clock down, they'll automatically dynamically reduce voltage. So there's a reason why you'd want to keep the core clock as low as you could get. You want to try and find the optimal clock speed where the thing produces the most hash for the least voltage, least power. It'll extend the card's life because you'll be able to reduce the temperatures most likely because of reduced power. You'll save power, less cost, and on top of that, less voltage, slightly at least, slightly less degradation. So it's a win-win. But overall, those are more or less, at least a high-level overview of the primary factors that cause degradation and wear voltage, thermal cycling, and the design more or less of the hardware. Not a lot of you do about those, but you want to try to keep your hardware always running and running as cool as you can. Shutting them off frequently isn't ideal and will cause accelerated degradation. So something to keep in mind. Some miners will actually allow you to more or less generate garbage so the hardware always keeps running even if something like the internet goes out. So if you're in a region where your internet goes out frequently for short periods, you can find a miner that'll allow you to configure it so it always keeps the hardware loaded, even if the internet goes out. And that can actually save the hardware from a little bit of wear and tear from that thermal cycling. So if the internet goes out frequently for a few minutes, the hardware will cool down. And then you can set your miner up so it never cools down, which actually is better for it. If you can't limit the max temperatures, which there's only so much you can do, keeping it always running is your best bet. And that's often why you could see things like this, GPUs in GPU farms, running longer than you see GPUs in gaming rigs. These gaming rigs, curiously enough, have a pretty hard life. They're hitting the power limit almost all the time, and they're cycling up and down and up and down all the time. So a GPU that's used a lot is oftentimes the worst case scenario. Mining GPUs, curiously, other than fanware, can last a really long time if they're managed appropriately. Things to keep in mind, things to think about. I'll link some videos for relevant things that talk about this in detail with people with experience. Um, definite uh, recommended watches in the comments below. Until next time, stay hashing.